This lesson will show how to calculate a confidence interval for an unknown population mean and a known population standard deviation. Step one, we calculate the sample mean x bar from the sample data. And again, in this section, we know the population standard deviation given by sigma. Step two, we find the z-score that corresponds to the confidence level, which is indicated by z sub alpha divided by two, where alpha is equal to one minus the confidence level. Step three, we calculate the error bound, which is equal to the z-score from number two times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, given by sigma divided by square root n. Step four, we construct the confidence interval, which is x bar minus the error bound to x bar plus the error bound. And then step five, we write a sentence that interprets the estimate in the context of the situation in the problem. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose scores on exams in statistics are normally distributed with an unknown population mean and a population standard deviation of three points. A random sample of 100 scores is taken and gives a sample mean of 68. Find a 90% confidence interval for the true population mean of statistics exam scores. Let's first record all of the given information. Notice here we are given the sample mean of 68 and therefore x bar equals 68. The sample size is 100 and therefore n equals 100. The population standard deviation is three points and therefore sigma equals three. The confidence level is 90% and therefore CL equals 0 0.90 as a decimal or just 0 0.9, which also means alpha, which is equal to one minus the confidence level is 0 0.1. And looking at the notes, step one is to find the sample mean, which in this case we were given x bar is 68. Step two, we find the z-score that corresponds to the confidence level, which is z sub alpha divided by two. Let's take a look at this in more detail. Because the confidence level is 90%, if we take a look at the standard normal distribution, the area under the curve over the same interval must be equal to 0 0.9 or 0 0.90. And because of the symmetry about the bell curve, the remaining area to the left and right must be the same and is given by alpha divided by two. So again, alpha is equal to one minus the confidence level, which is equal to 0 0.1, and therefore alpha divided by two is equal to 0 0.1 divided by two, or 0 0.05, which gives us the area to the right and left outside the confidence interval. So the z-score here on the right is given by z sub 0 0.05, and the z-score to the left would be negative z sub 0 0.05. And now to find the z-score, we need to know the area to the left of the z-score under the standard normal distribution, which we now know is equal to 0 0.90 plus 0 0.05, which is equal to 0 0.95. So now we will find the z-score on the TI-84, as well as using Desmos.com. So going to the TI-84, we press second VARS, for the distribution menu, option three for inverse norm. The area is the area to the left of the z-score, which we now know is 0 0.95. Because we have the standard normal distribution, mu is zero and sigma is one, so we press enter, 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 and enter one more time. And the z-score given by z sub 0.05 is approximately 1.645. Let's also show how to find this using desmos.com. Using desmos.com, we click show keypad, click functions, click the distributions tab, click inverse CDF, go back to functions, click normal distribution. For the standard normal distribution, we enter a mean of zero comma a standard deviation of one, right arrow, comma, the area to the left, which again we know is 0 0.95, enter, and of course we get the same result, which is approximately 1.645. So now that we know the z-score, or z sub 0 0.05, we can now calculate the error bound given by the z-score times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which is shown here. The error bound is equal to 1.645 times three 
the standard deviation divided by the square root of 100, where 100 is a sample size, which gives us 0 0.4935. And now that we have the error bound, we can construct the confidence interval given by x bar minus the error bound to x bar plus the error bound, which gives us 68, the sample mean, minus 0 0.4935 to 68 plus 0 0.4935 which gives a confidence interval of 67.5065 to 68.4935. The last step is to write a sentence that interprets the estimate, which in our case is we estimate with 90% confidence that the true population mean of the exam scores is between 67.5065 and 68.4935. Before we go, I do want to share this table here that gives the z-score for a specific confidence level. I hope you found this helpful.